In this video, we are going to work on the update user details mapping. And before we actually start writing Java code, let's go to Postman and have a look at the HTTP request that we are going to send. So we are going to send HTTP put request because we have created put mapping for the update user details method. And this is what we use in RESTful web services. When we create user details, we use post mapping and we send the HTTP post request. When we update user details, we use add put mapping annotation and we send HTTP put request. So this is going to be HTTP put request is going to be sent to forward slash users. And after the users we will need to specify which user details we want to update. So we'll need to provide a user ID. How do we know this user ID? We'll most likely get it from other requests. For example, when we create user details, we get back user ID, which was just created. And then we can use this user ID in the URL path to update user details that is stored under this ID, okay? So then we provide a couple of headers the accept header, which is application JSON in my case, and content type, which is also application JSON. By content type, we are specifying that in the body of HTTP request, we are going to send JSON. And the accept HTTP header will tell the server side which media type we want to receive back application JSON or, for example, application XML. So the body for HTTP put request is going to be very similar to the one that we used in HTTP post request when we were creating user details. Let me copy this JSON and paste it here. So in the body of HTTP put request, when we are updating user details, we're going to include information that we need to update user details, but I'm not going to include password and email here because for updating email address, I like to use completely different flow. And for updating user password, I also like to use a different flow. So I'm not going to include email and password here. I'm going to update first name or last name only. So now our HTTP request is ready. Let's switch to our Java code and add some information that will allow us to receive this HTTP request. Let's copy it from the post mapping. So our HTTP put mapping will also consume information in either XML or JSON, and it will also produce information in XML or JSON. So I can reuse this. I'll copy and paste it here. Now, if we go back to our HTTP request, we see that it needs to include user ID as a path parameter. So we will need to update our put mapping to be able to read that path parameter. And we already have this code, which is inside of our get mapping here. This is where we read path variable. Let me copy path and scroll down here into put mapping and add it here and I'll put a comma like this. Okay, so now we need to add method arguments. To read path parameter, we already have this code as well. We can use the path variable annotation to read user ID. Let me scroll down and paste it here. And the second method argument needs to be a request body annotation, which will allow us to read the body, which is included in HTTP request. If we look at the create method, the HTTP post request, we used request body annotation to read user details from the request body. We can reuse that. I can copy this, although it will not work as it is. And this is because we have this valid annotation here validation will fail because our JSON, which we include in the HTTP put request, does not contain email and password. So we need to either remove this valid annotation for it to work, or we need to create a different model class for HTTP put request only. And this is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to keep the add valid annotation so that I have validation for the body of this HTTP request. But instead of user details request model, I'll create a new class, which I'm going to call update user details request model. Let's do it this way. So now I'm going to go to my package and then I'll go to the request package. And here I'll create a new class. I'll call it update user details request model and click on finish. 
Now I will go into user details request model and I will copy first name and last name, including the annotations that I have here. I'll go back to my update user details request model and I will paste them here. And now I will generate getters and setters for these two fields. So I'll go to source and then generate getters and setters. Select both of them and I will insert them after the last name. Okay. Okay, now we have the update user details model bin and I'll go to user controller and import it. Okay, so now we have finished working with the method arguments and we are ready to update the body. Well, first of all, when we update user details, we can return the details of the updated user or we can return an empty body. Let's return user details. So I will return user rest and I will delete this. And now because we have users stored in our users map, I can use this users map to get object using user ID, which was provided as a path variable. And this will return as user rest, user details equals like this, but we have a conflict because we already have user details. So let me call it either a return value or stored user details, stored user details like this. And I will return stored user details but before returning them, I need to update them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use stored user details and I'm going to set a new first name, which I'm going to get from user details object sent to us as a body of HTTP request. So I'm going to get first name and I'm going to use stored user details again to set a new last name. And again, the last name as well, I will use from user details object, which we have received from the body of HTTP put request, get last name like this. And now because user details is updated before returning it, we will update our users map so that we have an updated user object store in it. So I'll use users to put a new object which is going to be stored under user ID key and it will have the value of stored user details like this. Okay, and then we will return stored user details. So let's run our application now and see if it works. My application should be up and running now. So I'll go to Postman and I will first need to create user because I have restarted my application and the existing users got all deleted. So I'll create a new user, send the HTTP post request. I have user created and I will need to copy user ID so that I can use it to update the record stored under this user ID. So I will replace this with a new user ID. And now I will use same first name and same last name for the first attempt. I'll send this request. All is successful, HTTP status code is 200 and I get user details, user ID should match and first name and last name all should match. Now I will update the first name, I will use I at the end and send this HTTP request again and I get back an updated first name. Okay, so it looks like it's working. We now know how to send HTTP put request and we know how to handle it in our REST controller. Let's continue.